You're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Lindy, your host. Today I have another candidate in the series of candidates on Greater Brockton. I have Wynn Farwell, Councilor at Large and former Mayor. Welcome, Wynn. How are you? Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here, Mark. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. Um, your face is familiar to Brockton voters. You were Mayor for four years and you've been Councilor at Large for two years. Two years. So, but you were a school committee member for 10 years. Yes. You were my school committee member in Ward 1, as a matter of fact. That's I'm correct. Still in Ward 1. Yeah. And uh, you decided after a long hiatus to come back and run again. Glutton for punishment, right? Yeah, you either love it or you don't. I guess that's the best way to put it. Okay, so you're running for re-election. Yes. Three of the incumbents are running for re-election. Uh, Councilor Shana Barnes decided she was not going to run for re-election. So there is a, a wide open seat. Usually incumbents do well when they run for re-election, most of the time. Depends on the political climate at the time, right? Yes. You, as yes. you know. So um, are you enjoying yourself as Councilor at Large? I, I do. Um, it's interesting how the issues are very similar to when I was in the mayor's office worrying about public education funding for both the Brockton Public Schools and Southeastern Regional, uh, public safety challenges. Um, obviously, we do need more police officers on the street. We have to keep up the staffing in the fire department. Uh, economic development, I think, is critical, but I'm also one who does not want to forget neighborhoods. Uh, I'm very big on trying to catalog all of the streets that our private ways and trying to get as many of them accepted as possible because frankly we have people in neighborhoods and their street has never been reconstructed in 30 or 40 years they're paying the same amount of taxes as other residents and just in fairness uh, and in terms of safety and and keeping the streets uh, in the condition they should be which I think enhances property values in an area, I, I don't want to forget neighborhoods as we undertake the downtown urban renewal project and other economic development initiatives. I was on one of those streets that was a private way. Rangeley Ave was a private way. It was one of the Bertarelli developments and we worked hard to get it to be a public way and then about 10 years to get it paved. Yes. Yeah. I had to move away to get it paved and then when I yeah. moved back, uh, my counselor joked to me that we're going to tear it apart, but that's a whole, that's a joke. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're right. Everything's old is new again. Think about it. When you were mayor, education funding. Now, the city's talking right now about going back after the state in a lawsuit. What do you think of that with the 10 years of school committee and four years as mayor being chairman of the school committee? I, I think it's a necessity uh, because I do not believe the funding formula recognizes all of the different challenges that we have in Brockton. We have people moving in, we have people moving out, and the people who move in, they may come from a school system which frankly does not have some kids learning at grade level, so now we have to expend extra services and time and effort to get them up to grade level. Uh, we have uh, 17, 18, 18,000 children. Uh, we have multiple, multiple school buildings, other like, unlike other cities. So the funding formula and the amount of money we receive really is critical to maintaining program services and staff. I think, unfortunately, the courts are going to have to step in because no one on Beacon Hill seems to connect the dots and realize that an older urban city is different. I think the courts are going to have to step in again and really tackle this educational equity issue for all kids in the Commonwealth. Well, if they listen to the Foundation Budget Review Committee, you being a former member of MASC like I am now, if they listened to the recommendations that the Foundation Commission did to review it, we should have a different funding formula, but we don't. So. Well, I, I think they're afraid of the implications of, of implementing that those suggestions. But on the other hand, if the courts order you to do it, you're not going to have a choice. Exactly. I would think that it would be better to sit down with all of the stakeholders, thresh out what needs to be done, carefully examine all of the different issues that Brockton and other older urban cities present, and come up with a solution. But again, apparently it's heading to the courts from everything that I've seen. Public safety, you mentioned being a, a former member of the Brockton Police Department as well. You have a vantage point for that. And how, how do you think we're doing? What do you think we could do better? Um, I know you questioned overtime at the council with that. Talk about that. 
Well, in general, in terms of public safety, I try not to get too hung up on statistics because if you look at the homicide rate, for example, and you say, well, it's lower than the year before, my concern is all of the shooting incidents because when a shot goes off, the people who are pulling the trigger certainly aren't trained like police officers. Where does that bullet go? And my one fear is that someday someone is going to be badly hurt, paralyzed, or killed because a bullet either went into a vehicle or went into a home and struck someone. So we really need to get a handle on who are the shooters, where are the guns coming from, and what can we do to address that. And some departments, and they're much bigger than we are, Austin, Texas, they have a firearms investigation unit. And any time that there is a firearms-related crime, they have a group of people who focus in on every aspect of that, not only collecting the shell casings, but retrieving the bullets, having them examined. If someone's arrested, where did the weapon come from? Trace it all the way back to the manufacturer's origin and how many people touched it in between. Was it used in crimes in other cities? Because unfortunately, uh, when you pick up the paper now, you can see where the proliferation of shooting incidents is much higher. And with respect to overtime, you know, look, the police need resources, but if you're starting to spend close to 10% of your regular budget, $2.3 million on overtime, I think some of that money should be carved out and you should hire more police officers because that will cut down on crime. Uh, you'll have more bodies on the street to observe and watch and hopefully prevent crimes. That in itself will cut down on court time and arrests. And I, I really think we have to have more uh, more vigilance on the street to prevent crime before it happens. What about the facilities? We're sitting in a 1970 police department. We have 1890 firehouses. You go around to the communities around here. Now, Foxborough is lucky. You get Gillette Stadium there, they make Gillette pay for a public safety complex. We don't have Gillette here. We don't have the revolution here. What do we need? Do we need better facilities? I know we had an issue with a ladder truck. We finally, we, I think we're on a borrowed one and we're getting a new one or we're fixing it or whatever. What do you think about the facilities? I mean, you sat in, you were out on the street too, but you sat in that police station and it's 1970. Well, we've clearly outgrown the police station. And as far back as when I was in the mayor's office, the, the dream was to take over the old stop and shop uh, location, which is now Vicente's Market at Pleasant and Warren Avenue, and that would have given you a, a one-floor sprawling complex with adequate parking for personnel, a storage facility for cars that are towed. That didn't happen, but down the road the city is clearly going to have to take a look at the public safety infrastructure, but that's going to compete against the school infrastructure because frankly we're going to need, I would say, in the south end of the city because of uh, population of the school children, you're going to need another school down there. And that's, even with SBAB, School Building Assistance Bureau funding, we're going to have to pay something. So you've got all of these competing demands, and unfortunately there isn't enough money really to address all of them. So it's going to take the, Solomon of, the wisdom of Solomon, as we say, uh, and the input from different stakeholders, as I always like to say, to tell us what direction should we go in. Big city issues on the table, desal plant. Mayor wants to buy the desal plant instead of renting it. Um, MWRA has been mentioned as an option at the council level. What's your, what's your thinking on this issue? I think that you have to look at both, uh, and I'm still studying the, uh, both the MWRA and the desal proposal. I have a notebook that's probably five or six inches thick of information about the Aquaria plant, about uh, desalination in general, the costs associated with it long-term and short-term. Uh, the MWRA obviously is a different water source. It's a protected watershed area, whereas Aquaria uses a tidal area, an estuary, where obviously you are prone to any type of environmental concerns, uh, mm -hmm. issues that might arise. So you really have to study both of them, and then eventually I think you have to pick one that will hopefully serve the city for 50 to 100 years. Where does the public weigh in on that? I've heard people say, okay, let's put it on the ballot. We've done different things by ballot. Residency is ballot. If you do a debt exclusion, it's ballot, okay? In Massachusetts, voters vote for things on the statewide ballot, and it seems like what happens is the legislature then says, okay, you voted for it or you didn't vote yeah. for it. We're going to go in and correct it anyway. 
you guys are elected to represent the people you serve. How do you feel about something like that, maybe going out to a ballot question? Well, there is a state law which mandates that if you buy a water plant or a water source, you are supposed to put it on the ballot and an election call for that purpose and allow the residents of that community to vote on it. The proposal before us asks for a home rule petition which basically says notwithstanding all of the other general laws, Brockton wants to do this and it streamlines the process. But in streamlining the process, you're carving out the opportunity for residents to weigh in on it, and I, I don't favor that. If, if this passes through the council, it absolutely should go on the ballot so that people have a say in what happens for the next 20 years with respect to Aquaria. And that was not allowed back when the original Aquaria issue came up, which in my view was, was not the proper way to approach it. I always said if they put the power plant on the ballot, we would have stopped talking about that issue a long time ago. Yeah, That's a whole nother story. Yes. So I, I just got the three minute cue. I want to give you at least two minutes to tell us how to contact you, uh, your phone number, your website, your Facebook, you're very social media savvy these days. I know you're doing a lot of that. And then forget that I'm here, look at the camera, talk to the voters directly about why you should be reelected. Well, most importantly, my home number is 508 583-0052. My cell phone number is 508-272-9880. Uh, my email, for anyone that wants to remember it, although it is posted on the city's website, is lowercase letters W Farwell at COB, which stands for City of Brockton, C-O-B-M-A dot U-S. And I do have a website, which is winfarwell.net, and we do try to keep up with it, uh, put more information on it. And we, we really welcome comments, criticism, suggestions. Um, many times department heads wonder, well, why didn't you give us the questions in advance of us coming into council? It's because residents know that an issue is coming up and they'll call you over the weekend and say, hey, can you ask this? Mm -hmm. Can you find out that? And so we have an obligation to present the concerns of residents to the department heads or to any issue that's discussed in city council. Okay. Tell yourself. Forget I'm here. Okay, well, I, there's nothing I can say today that would adequately express my thanks for the honor of serving in city government and being a counselor at large for the last two years. I would like to continue service as a counselor at large. I do have some experience, which I try to apply to all of the different, different issues that come up. And the one thing I'm not going to do is be a rubber stamp. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to represent your best interests. I think that's what a counselor, above all, has to do is not look at any particular issue narrow-mindedly, but is it good for Brockton? Does it benefit all residents? And I want to emphasize all residents because whether you're from the African-American community, Cape Verdean community, people who have been here a long time in Brockton, we represent you, and we should do that with honesty and integrity. I think you deserve that. I think when you send in your tax dollars to us, to be spent, they should be spent wisely, and that's why I try to pay particular attention to the finances of the city, because if your financial house is not in order, then really anything you do from there is questionable. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wynn. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. And we'll have you all back when we have yeah. the November election and we can do a nice forum yeah. or a debate. Yeah. And okay. by the way, just, and these guys would know better than I do, but Instead of having the chairs and we each have to get up, which wastes a lot of time, do you think there'd ever be a chance to have kind of a semicircular table where the camera yeah, could focus? If we or? can get a table that big, because there's 80 of uh, Three or we'll, four of them? We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. figure it out. Because that does take a lot of time to each have each person you, you, you get up. You just got to eat your Wheaties that day, that's all. Well, yeah, yeah, but if you're they way get, down the end and, you know, the... Uh, we'll work it out. Yeah. They gave me the cue, so I got to... Say goodbye. Okay. Okay. Watching Greater Brockton, Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates for mayor, council at large, city council, and school committee. But most of all, do your civic duty and go out and vote. Thanks for joining us.